Before I start today's presentation, I have an announcement to make about One Village, One India. One Village, One India is our non-profit organization that has been helping kids towards their schooling and old age people for a better placing, place to live. And also, we have undertaken several village development activities. The mission is to serve not by any regional or religious background, but from one human to another. Please take a moment to have a look at our Facebook page which has our initiatives, our mission, our goals and also various videos from the work we have been doing. And I have also posted all these on my blog. No matter where you live on this planet, there are always people you can serve. Please do that and inspire others. Getting back to the presentation, the topic for today is Java Collections. I will like to start this with an example. Every time you browse through an e-commerce website like Amazon or eBay, you see that these applications retrieve all the items they sell from within their database, then display them on the UI. And as an end user, when you add a particular item, when you like a particular item and add it to the shopping cart, they hold it in the memory or session as long as you either check out or sign out. And that's exactly where Java Collections comes into picture and you, you use the various classes and interfaces within the Java Collections to hold on to the different objects within your application. So let's start by looking at the key interfaces and classes within the Collections API. At the top of it is the Collection interface, which is the main interface in the java.util package. And this interface is inherited or extended by two other interfaces, the set and the list interfaces. Set only allows unique objects to be added into the data structure. It doesn't allow duplicates. List is just a list of items. And uh, I'll give in more details on the list in the next presentation when I explain you the various types of lists and also when to use which. But for now, just remember that set doesn't allow duplicate and list is just a list of items and an additional thing in the list is you can add or remove items from within a list using an index, unlike you can't do that in a set. And within set you have has set, linked has set and then a tree set which implements the sorted set interface. And within list, you have linker list, you have array list and a vector. As you can see, the dotted lines mean implementation, whereas the solid lines mean inheritance or extension. The other important interface within the Collections API is the map interface. And map allows you to store objects as key value pairs. For example, if the admin of Amazon.com wants to see a, see, the, see a report of the orders placed by several different users, let's say 10 different users at, at the end of the day, your Java application can use a map to fetch all these details from within the database and uh, store it in a map as key value pairs. So the key would be the customer names and the value would be a list of orders they have placed. So that's how useful the map is. And, and the map interface is uh, implemented by hash table, linked hash map, and hash map. We also have a sorted map interface, which is implemented by the tree map class. We'll, we'll see the details of each of these classes and uh, when to use which and why do we have so many classes under each of these interfaces in the next presentation, starting with list. Two other important components of the Java Util Collections package are the iterator and the collections class. The iterator is an interface, whereas the collections is a class. Don't get confused between collections class and the collection interface. Collections class provides you with static methods that you can call. They are utility methods which allow you to play around with the different collection classes. They will allow you to create a set out of a list and so they, it provides several other utility methods. I will discuss or I will present them in a future presentation. 
and the iterator class is implemented by most of these collection classes here and when you call a get iterator method on any of these classes it they provide you with the iterator class which you can then use to iterate over all the different elements within that particular collection that's pretty much about the collections api to summarize you now know that the collection interface is the key interface within the collections api which is implemented by set interface and the list interface within set we have several other different classes and interfaces and within list we have several different classes that implement the list interface the map interface doesn't directly extend or inherit from the collection collection interface it stands on its own and you use map to save or uh, to hold on to the key value pairs wherein the keys are unique ids and you also know the two other important components which has which are the iterator and the collections class which provides you with utility methods in the next presentation i'll be presenting the three different classes under list where we will learn why we have three different classes and when to use which and the differences between them as i have announced at the start of this presentation please take a moment to go to our facebook page on one village one india please take up similar initiatives in your community your village and please inspire others until then keep sharing and learning thanks for watching